Hey guys, DMI here for another episode of Link's Awakening. We finished off the Face Shrine, and we're gonna do some preparation in advance of getting ready for the seventh dungeon. The seventh dungeon is a bit of a gimmicky unlock, and the way that you do it is kind of silly. So we're gonna take care of some housekeeping things today, a little administrative work prior to doing any of that. If you remember, we had some items that we were unable to collect earlier in the game because we didn't have the hookshot. So now that we do have the hookshot, we're gonna go through and scoop those up. Easy peasy. I kind of wish that the hookshot in this game I mean, it's a good item and it's my favorite item, but I still wish they could have done a little more with it instead of just it being able to basically stun stuff. It gets worse as an item when it was supposed to be featured in Oracle of Ages, I believe. And for some reason they decided to tank it and make it an item that is capable of not doing as much when you upgrade it. The upgrade feels like a downgrade to me. It becomes the switch hook, which I don't like at all. But you have to use it in order to progress through that game near the later dungeons, which I think kind of sucks. But hey, hookshot's about a no hookshot. So picking up that piece of heart is really nice. Gets us another heart container. And then you can just take a nice little merry jaunt of massacre through this hallway and pop outside. So once again, as we pick up new items, as we progress, there are more things that we can grab, which is really cool. We're gonna keep fast traveling. Our next stop is actually going to be the prairie, not because of the prairie itself, but because I need to go through the mysterious forest. There's actually, wait, oh, oh, you know what? I made a mistake. We're gonna go right back to where, we <laughs> we're gonna go right back to where we just were. And we're actually gonna confront someone for their misinformation and nefariousness. We could have done this around the same time that I had gone and done the magnifying lens thing, but nope. I don't have, I don't know if I'll ever have this area memorized just because of how bad my short-term memory is. But if you remember Christine, the catfisher, we did give her a letter away. So in return, we are accepting probably a hush bribe for her misleading Mr. Right, poor guy. So that brings us up to, nope, that is not what I meant to click. That brings us up to 13. The, I don't wanna say magic number, it's not required, but for completion's sake, the eventual number that you're gonna to want to try to hit is actually, no, you know what, let's go, let's go to the pond. The eventual number that you're going to want to hit is 20. That will get you the most handsome of rewards, which is really nice. We do want that. Now, there are, there are, I mean, you can play this game however you want to. I think that I'm the kind of person where I like to do challenge runs. I like to kind of give myself sort of arbitrary limits on what I'm supposed to be able to do. But for the sake of this run through, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm actually going to just show you as much as I can. Collect some rupees here and there's, as you can see, a piece of heart, nice. Can only get that with the hook shot. Now, when I say I'm gonna try to complete things, there are some additions to this game that were added in the realm of kind of bonus content. 
that is in the kind of same vein as Mario Maker. It was their attempt to, I think, follow and build on the popularity of that game, which I am in favor of people doing. I'll show it off a little bit, but the reality of it is that while I will devote a little time of it, maybe like a little bonus episode at the end of the series, it's not really something I enjoy doing particularly. I think the reality of that situation is that the bonus stuff, for some people, they just raved about it. They're just like, this is awesome, I love this. But my personal opinion is I just thought it was really underwhelming. I mean, I, I think Mario Maker is fun. I like playing Mario Maker as the game. I'm not much in the kind of creating scenarios type, but if that's what you're into, sure. But playing through this, you'll realize that it's not, it's not that. It's not that at all. This kind of feels like they, it was a bit of a half measure. So if you remember, we had the magnifying lens and we were told to go down to the Tronbo shores this is the only way that this will work. Only when you've come this far into the trade sequence will you be able to see this guy and talk to him. Gorilla. Sounds kind of like Godzilla. So, he won't accept the majority of items, the ones that you need to complete the game, but you can give him the shovel. That's an option. So he won't take bombs, but he will take he will take the shovel, so if he will take it, having your, yeah, I do have that. Now, this is not a permanent thing. However, in making this trade, you do kind of get the, I don't know if it's the strongest weapon in the game, but it's one of them. So maybe the penultimate strongest, strongest weapon in the game, the boomerang, has similar qualities to the hookshot and being able to stun certain enemies like whiz robes and do damage to them, so that's pretty nice. And you can also cheese the final boss of the game by using the the boomerang. I'm not going to do that just by virtue of wanting to show my elite skills. I mean, it's fun to do that, but it just kind of feels a bit anticlimactic if you get that far and you do all of these tricks and everything and then you just wind up you know, kind of punking out. I mean, play the game however you want to, but I like to have at least a little semblance of challenge. So we were, we've got some stuff to do. We were told that we need to go to the mountain, but that doesn't really resonate with us. It's a little cryptic, so maybe a phone call will help. Always does. I never used these as a kid, but I think they're kind of fun to listen to now that I'm going back and playing. So this is a very direct hint. And part of the reason why the sixth dungeon feeds you rupees. We are going to hap. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Please. Okay. So you can't you can't really do this until you have the hook shot. I mean you can, but it's a lot harder to do. So this is the signpost maze. It's kind of a neat little gimmick of winding up at a recording studio with one of our new Hot 100 favorite artists. So you have to follow the signposts exactly as they tell you to. If you go down, you're not going to be able to read it from the backside, so you're going to have to make sure that you follow it directly. The directions that it gives you have to be one-to-one. -one. So literally, it's very linear. You're just going to follow it in the same path that it tells you to. If there's obstacles in the way, then just make sure to keep track of where you were going and going around those things. There will be gels and little crabs. There are bits and pieces of this maze that you can do earlier in, in this area, but you're not going to be able to complete it in the way that you need it to. So it's just kind of like a keep this in mind type of situation. You'll come back to this place, you know, oh, that's not it. You'll have to keep coming back to this place 
and it'll be frustrating because you won't have all the requisite tools. And the other thing that's really frustrating is that if you mess this up, you'll have to do that like I just did. So that was uh, that was intentional. That was being that was for science. So you know what not to do. If you at any point do screw up the directions of what the maze tells you to do, it will have you start from the beginning. It does reset, but that's not too big of a deal. I remember this really frustrating me as a kid. I just couldn't kind of grasp the idea of following things one to one. And this is the really tricky one because like you would assume like, oh, okay, it tells you to go to the right. So there's a one post there, right? That's the one that you want to go to, but kind of jukes you a little bit. A little bit of a misdirect. Once you go to that one instead. So childhood me just could not fathom how to figure any of that out because it's you're trying to go into the way of the cardinal direction that the signpost itself is in, not above or below it. it has to be direct, following it in a straight line, because that's when you would go to this one. You can go directly south. So we're almost done. This is kind of annoying just because of how silly it is. It is very gimmicky, but I don't know. It's kind of a funny little way that they handle this, I suppose. We're almost finished here. Good old signpost maze. So doing all of that drains the pool. And we get to meet one of the best characters in the game for one of the best tracks in the game. So prepare yourselves. This one's a banger, everybody. You might remember this guy as Wart from Mario 2. He has found new life here on Colent Island, rebranded himself as Mamu. We would love to listen to him jam. Now, for every good thing comes a price. You can't just go to a concert for free and expect to have a quality performance. So he's gonna have to have a, a cut of the jib. So 300 rupees it is for one of the best songs in Zelda history. Let's listen in. That was a one-time show, one-time only. So we're very thankful for that. And if you open up your ocarina, you'll see that now we have the Song of Soul from Mamu. Very nice. That's actually, it was a one-time performance and it will be a one-time performance for us. We actually don't need it more than once to use it. As much as we use Mambo's tune, we're only going to use Mamu's tune one time. And I'm not sure how direct the game is about explaining where you're supposed to use it, so I'm kind of curious how that's handled. I think I'm gonna hit up the telephone booth one more time and see if that's been updated. Because I know what I'm supposed to do with it, but I wanna know how well the game leads the player on into finding it. So let's go ahead and pop in and see what we get. Okay, Flying Rooster, Mabe Village. Lying under the weather vane. How could a rooster be lying under a weather vane? Weather vanes are pretty solid and heavy. It have to be squished flat. We're not playing Paper Mario. So this is kind of the I don't know, the gimmick of that. You can push the weather vane along. And this is the gimmick for the path along to the seventh dungeon. But, oh boy. Um, looks like the flying roosters had better days. But 
We did just get a song that says it can make the soul feel alive. So maybe... Maybe that'll help. Let's try and play it. Sounds a little bit better when we do it. So this is kind of creepy. A little bit of reincarnation in a child's game. You wouldn't have expected this, but playing the Mamu song does help us to bring back the flying rooster from the grave. And he becomes our, our animal buddy. So there's actually parts of the ascent to the seventh dungeon that we can't do without him, her, it. So we do need to bring the rooster along with us, which is pretty funny, watching it flap its little wings. So our rooster buddy will be helping us out along the way. The remainder of what we're trying to do is all in the path of Taltel Heights. So we're gonna skidoo our way up there, not too far from where we were. That's what's nice about this game is that I actually have a pretty decent understanding of the geography. Whereas I've played plenty of other games in the Zelda series where I play them and I look back and I'm just like, where on earth am I? This one's pretty simple. Maybe it's just because of my experience level with this title in particular. But man, there are some other ones where I'm looking back at it and I'm just thinking like, man, I have no clue how on earth I got to that spot or where I'm supposed to go after that. So thankfully this one is pretty user friendly. And of course, another interruption. Let's go, buddy. We got places to be, people to see. Oh, I know. There's this, actually Taltel Heights is home to the two final dungeons. And if I haven't mentioned it before, the best song in the game. So you can you can clean up some of the hidden items, the collectibles along the way that you might have missed. Some of which you can't get anyway. Excuse you. Because of lack of proper equipment. So we will do that. That is a heart piece we'll come back to later. So yeah, this is another hookshotable area. I showed you earlier before that even with the... Thanks game. Even with the long jump that you could do with the Pegasus boots, it's not its not good enough. It's not going to get you there. Okay, great. Uh, all right, I guess the game does not want me to do that, so we will just go this way. This is not going to be full completion of... Well, maybe, maybe I will. Just by virtue of getting past this area and to the seventh dungeon. The seventh dungeon itself is quite long, so I might just fully skidoo this area. Do a little exploring. There's some tektites up here. And you get some full orchestration of Telltale Heights, which is nice. I say that as I immediately go into a cave and screw it up. So one of the problems that you're going to encounter with the seventh dungeon is that you can't get into it from the onset. You're gonna actually have to do some work to get there and scoot your way inside. And that's why we actually need the rooster. And unfortunately the rooster... <laughs> Thanks game. So that was unfortunate. Don't fall in holes kids. You might wind up in some sort of underground dungeon with a creepy clown or just popping outside of a waterfall. Let's try that again, take two. So this is why we need the rooster coming up. Hopefully I don't screw this up again because the third time will probably just result in me editing back to the first one. We're gonna be more careful. Okay, so that should do it. We do a careful jump. Uh, okay, whew. All right, so this is why you need the rooster. You can't actually do this. Nope, 
Sorry, buddy. That's animal cruelty. We need you to be in this, on this screen. All right. So this is a lot quicker than it was in the original. The original was a bit of a slog to get through here. But with our rooster friend, we can net ourselves the bird key. I don't know why they call it that. Couldn't tell you. So that's literally it. That is the entire gimmick of why we needed to pay 300 rupees to get Mamu's song and resurrect the rooster. Bring in the cock to life. That's it. That's literally it. And wouldn't you know it. So he gives you a little teaser there. It just, I don't know. That's one of the things in this game where, you know, it's obviously kept in for the sake of how the game is made to be progressed, but it definitely feels very much like this is padding, because it is. This is 100% padding. It gives you something to do, I guess, but let's go ahead and pop in here real quick. See another f familiar face. This is the hen housekeeper. We have. So, he is very impressed by the size of our big flying friend. That's neat. Thanks for the compliment, sir. Always willing to take that in stride. So we're getting pretty close to where we need to be. There's a, another secret seashell here, which is great. We're getting pretty close to the number that we're going to need to wrap stuff up. You can actually approach the area of, of where you can turn in the secret seashells. You can do that at any point, but I just figure it's more fun to do it once you got them all. There's no real rush for me to, to turn them in. I mean, the reward is cool. The, well, sorry, rewards, plural. They're cool. I like them, but... I believe there are rewards at 5, 10, and 20 of them, so perhaps we'll pop in before we hit 20 just to see what we get. So we have the key now. Don't fall on the waterfall. It will take you down to the bottom. You don't want that. we got to navigate this area a little bit. I can't believe part of me thought that I was going to be able to skip this area and include it as part of the next episode. That would have been wild. That would not have happened. That would have taken way too long. The seventh dungeon is pretty tricky. It is quite long. I think it's one of the longest ones in the game, actually. So you're going to want to. Oh, excuse you. I don't know if this is the one cave where if you screw it up, you don't get any of the treasure. If it, if it resets or. OK, it does. I don't quite remember what order it is. Nope, that's not it. Maybe it's the one on the left? I'm trying to think about how to do this. Um, did not practice this one before I started recording. <laughs> Actually, that looks completely wrong. This might be a, a wipe, a forward wipe if I can't figure this out soon enough. Is this one? No. What happens if I open two of them? Okay, you just get nothing. So I believe I, I tried all of them, so I think it's the one that's closest to the door that needs to be opened first, maybe? That sounds right, but... And I think you can only push stuff once. Yeah. Okay, so... Let's, let's not goof this one up too many more times. The viewership will not appreciate that. Okay, so maybe this is one of those like one and dones, like you just, I'll come back to it. It's fine, we don't have time for that. We'll worry about it on our way out. Instead, we'll just collect this tried and true guaranteed chest with the secret seashell. That brings us up to 15, so five away, not so bad, not so bad. Wonder if it's easier to do it. Or maybe it's this one first. No? Okay. Well, like I said, not super invested in whatever that crap is. We got a dungeon to open. We don't have time for these 
silly little treasures. We'll save the treasure for another time. We're a baller on a schedule. We gotta keep at it. And we're almost there, so. Wow, thanks game, okay. It is correct, we are near the tower. There is actually the keyhole that we need to Slide inside. Ooh. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Woo, woo. That was close. Falling in lots of holes today. All right. Almost there, ladies and gents. Just about ready. We're not playing around. Excuse you. We are not playing around. I mean, we are playing around technically because we are playing a game, but within the meta universe of what we're doing, we are not playing around. We're not playing around while we're playing around. Obvious bombable wall here. I believe this is a, yep, it's a fairy fountain. So we're actually a little low on health, so we'll take that, that's nice. Remember, we still have the secret medicine and the fairy from the first bottle we collected, so we don't really need anything else. I mean, I've been so pro at this game anyway that you can tell that health management, uh, simple, okay? Like, clearly, like, it's been a, it's been a, a work of art. It's mastery of this game. So the climax of the Tao Tao Mountain Rage, Eastern side, is this pretty cool looking dungeon here? Let's go ahead and get popping. This actually might be my favorite dungeon, I don't know. I really like the, the gimmick of this one, although it is very frustrating if you don't know what you're doing. Which is a theme of me. But that's a pretty cool way to get inside it. But that's for next time. We're gonna take on dungeon seven. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.